Hi, you're listening to the My Body, My Story podcast. But you never know how much impact you're actually making. You never know how many people's lives you'll change just through existing and being you. This is the 45 over 45 chapter where we celebrate rule breakers and role models, the women who inspire us to live life our way and to show their sensuality, beauty, soul and true essence. Here, we talk about what it's like to be 45 plus, adjusting to the changes that come with time and we listen to the stories of our participants. If you have an interesting story, we'd love for you to participate. You can email us at info at alexandrawalker.com That's Alexandra spelt with a K-S. Or visit our website, alexandrawalker.com. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the My Body, My Story project. And today with us in the studio, Sarah. And while she's sitting in a makeup chair and Chitra is doing makeup for her, I'll be asking her a few questions. Hi, Sarah. (laughs) Hi. Welcome and let's start and tell us 10 facts about yourself. Uh, I'm 46. I live on the Mornington Peninsula in Victoria. Uh, Single, no children. I work as a recruiter for an engineering firm, Mm -hmm. uh, which I've just started doing in the last uh, probably six months and I'm loving it. I feel like I've finally found my job. (laughs) Uh, I love hiking and getting in the outdoors. I think one of my biggest achievements to date has been climbing Mount Kilimanjaro in Africa. That was uh, amazing. It was a next level experience. How long did uh, it it took? About seven or eight days. Oh my God. It was, uh, they say, slowly, slowly, pole pole. And uh, I took that literally. I went very slowly, so I was with a large group and um, I ended up doing it on my own with a porter and a guide and the rest of the group would finish an hour or so ahead of me. So I had, it was like a solo journey mm. on Kilimanjaro, it was amazing, yeah. really good, yeah. Very spiritual experience. Oh yeah, 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 it was phenomenal. So um, yeah, hiking's there's just something about being out in nature and Kilimanjaro kind of looking down out above the clouds and across Tanzania was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. What is the next uh, goal to climb? Which um, mountain? I'm going to keep it a bit lower. Probably uh, I would like to do the full Camino Santiago mm-hmm. um, for a while. Just pre COVID, I was selling hiking tours of Spain. Um, and that was amazing, and I got to do the last 100 kilometres, but it's about 800 in total, so I'd like to do the full length of that, Mm -hmm. and the sister pilgrimage or the dual pilgrimage, which you can do in Japan, called the Kamano Kodo, so Mm -hmm. that's a little bit shorter, but, yeah, they're next on my bucket list. (laughs) Yeah, I was going to say, a nice bucket list. (laughs) Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, what else on your bucket list? (laughs) Oh, let me think. They're the big ones. They're the big ones that I'd like to do. Uh, I wouldn't mind doing the Lara Pinta Trail in Australia. Mm. And, where, where is it? I, I um, in, um, I don't know where it is actually. South Australia, Northern Territory. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, Central Australia. So I wouldn't mind doing that one. There's some great walks in New Zealand, the Queen Charlotte Track and the Milford Sound. Mm-hmm. There's, uh, there's just so many. <laughs> yeah, so plenty of things to do. <laughs> yeah, yeah, plenty to do, yeah. Okay. Is that, did we, did we think, say all the 10 facts about yeah, yourself? Yeah, I think we've covered, we may not have got up to 10, but I, they're, they're the big ones. <laughs> they're the important ones. <laughs> okay, so you mentioned that you just uh, started your work six, uh, new, new work six months ago, and what did you do before? Uh, before that, um, as a result of COVID, uh, I couldn't do hiking to sell hiking tours mm-hmm. anymore, uh, particularly in Europe. And so I found a job doing compliance on wind farms. Mm-hmm. 
So that was really interesting. Learn a lot about renewable energy and um, wow, and the industry. And obviously, it's a growth area in Australia at the moment. Are there many wind wind farms in Australia? Yeah, yeah. There's lots of them. There's um, the ones I looked after were in um, Western Victoria and southwestern Victoria, but yeah, there are um, quite a few up the east coast of Australia. Were you born in Australia, in Victoria? Yes, yep, born on uh, Phillip Island, where the penguins are. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> yep, yeah, born there and grew up in um, central Victoria mm. and then uh, moved to Melbourne. Yep, nice. Well, I think we've got 10 facts about you. <laughs> <laughs> there we go, great. <laughs> Okay, let's move to a uh, subject of our podcast. The main, the main subject is aging and our body. And I'd like to ask you, um, what does aging mean to you now at, at this age? Uh, for me, aging is growing in wisdom. Mm. It's looking back on lessons learned throughout your life and and looking forward, learning from others that are older than you. Mm -hmm. uh, so I see it as a really positive, positive thing as I'm approaching, my 50s not too far off, but I'm excited about it. <laughs> yeah. The, um, yeah, I see it as a really positive thing learning from your own experiences and the experiences of others. So if you could go back to any age, what it would be and why? And what advice would you give yourself at this <laughs> age? I would go back to my 20s mm -hmm. and tell myself that uh, your mother is right most of the time. <laughs> <laughs> Listen to your mother. <laughs> yeah, yep. 98% of the time. And... Uh, I would definitely say, don't wait for the husband and the white picket fence to buy a house. Start investing now. <laughs> mm, yeah. yeah. So now it's very um, hot topic. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Yeah. It's uh, yeah. So, had good twenties. Really enjoyed them. But yeah, those extra bit of tips. If I had have listened to my mother's advice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If your body could talk, what do you think it it would ask you or tell you? It would definitely tell me to listen, <laughs> listen to what I'm telling you. So, you know, the, listen to your gut instinct. Um, your body tells you when you're stressed and um, tired yeah. or if you're not looking after yourself, if you're not healthy, you start to feel those aches and pains more. Mm -hmm. um, so definitely stop and listen to me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> The, the question is how to learn yeah, <laughs> to definitely. hear, yeah, yeah. to understand this language. Yeah, I think it takes quite a while to figure out what each signal means. And uh, for everybody it's unique, it's different. And do you think that a uh, negative body image can affect relationship? And in what way? It definitely can affect your relationship. I, the negative body image ties into your self-worth. So not feeling good about the way you look, whether it's too skinny, too fat, I don't like my nose, I don't like my legs, I don't like my boobs, uh, you know, all the different parts. We've all got a bit that we don't like, <laughs> some, some more than others, but... Um, it can also translate into I'm not good enough. Mm. And when you think you're not good enough, you can prevent yourself from having opportunities. Mm. Uh, so uh, I guess I liken it to Kilimanjaro. I was, I never would have thought I could have done anything like that. Mm. And I joined a, a body positive adventure group mm. called Escaping Your Comfort Zone. And I went from doing not much at all to triathlons oh, wow. and you know doing the stadium stomp events where you climb a ridiculous amount of stairs mm. um, doing walking marathons um, the triathlons was the big one I never ever thought I'd do a triathlon and now I've done three oh my so God. <laughs> it's um it's 
changing the way you speak to yourself. It's like these are the things I can do with my body. Yeah. Um, and the new friendships you gain, the confidence you gain um, just by allowing yourself and giving yourself permission to. So I think, um, yeah, if you do have that negative body image, that also is negative self-talk and you can, I guess, self-sabotage yourself and not take opportunities that you're presented with. And I even heard some women saying uh, that it affected their um, job choices, like because the, during the interview they wouldn't be chosen for... Like mainly I hear it from overweight women like uh, who, who lost, let's say, they lost uh, some weight and then they're saying, now I see the difference. Like before, nobody would hire me and now like I can get more jobs I want. And I was just always wondering, is it because of her self-confidence or it's also uh, people's uh, stereotypes? Like, you know, I, I don't know, it's, it's, I'm leading to the, another, questions, um, another question of what do you think are the main causes of body image issues, of body image insecurities? Uh, there's, it's the societal expectations mm -hmm. and the expectations we put on ourselves. Mm -hmm. um, Earlier on in my life, I did a lot of singing, semi-professional singing mm -hmm. with a, a choir. And I love that. I had a great time and some amazing experiences as a result of it. Um, and I was also involved in musical theatre and not getting the roles because you don't look the right way. Yeah. And it's, it would be the same um, with acting, I guess. They're looking for a particular look and they want you to look a particular way and it's no different in society. Yeah. Uh, but we also take that on board and accept it. And in accepting that, it becomes the norm. So, you know, I could never do that. I'm, I'm too fat or I'm, you know. I'm too old. <laughs> I'm too old. There's always, I'm too something. Yeah, um, or I'm I mean, too thin. <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. It's um, body image affects everyone, I think, no matter what your size. Mm -hmm. uh, and I have seen people that have lost a lot of weight and then all of a sudden gained the confidence because they feel like people are notice, noticing them more. But I think, I don't think that changes. I think perhaps in the weight loss, their health may improve as a result. And it's not necessarily about the shape or the way they look. Um, how they feel. But it's how you feel when you're feeling healthier, you're more positive about yourself. Yeah, so you you don't uh, transmit that insecurity out there, and when you're confident, then it shines. Yeah, so you can see that the person is confident, and obviously they want to hire you. <laughs> yeah, or well, people will say to me, "Oh, Sarah, I don't see you as a plus size person." I'm like, "I'm a size 22. <laughs> I've got a curvy figure. It's I don't see that as a negative. Yeah, for me." There's just more of me to love. <laughs> Unless you, don't, you feel healthy or you feel yeah. that you're... Yeah, and it comes back to listening to your body. It's yeah. uh, at the moment I'm probably the largest I've ever been mm. and I'm starting to notice it now, you know, I feel it in my knees mm. and the lethargy. I'm like, okay, so I just need to get out and make sure I get that half hour walk in a day. There's 10,000 steps. Oh, no, that's six kilometres a day, so unless yeah. I'm training for something. <laughs> but just half an hour of movement, so whether that's doing the housework, yeah. getting out for half an hour of fresh air or, yeah. you know, putting some music on and dancing like no one's watching for half an hour. It's, um, yeah. it's more about movement and how that makes me feel. That translates to positivity for me. So you just answered the question, how do you overcome body-related insecurities when they come up? Do you have any other methods go to? Um, learning to acknowledge it before it gets too far along um, the negative journey. Mm -hmm. when, when I was growing up, if I threw a tantrum, my mum would call me Sadie Yuck. Mm -hmm. And so I refer to that negative voice now as Sadie Yuck. 
And uh, depending on how loud Sadie is, depends on the level of the language that I will use mm. to tell Sadie to be quiet. Um, acknowledging it that, yes, that feeling's real, but it's real to me. It's not the actual reality mm -hmm. and finding positive things to think about. So that's, you know, you've got a great family that love you. You've got great friends that support you. You've got a great job. You've got your own house. You climb Kilimanjaro, it depends how extreme I have to go. Mm -hmm. But I have that list on my wall of things I've achieved so that when that yourself. negativity kicks in, I'll look at that list and go, oh, yeah, I've done that and I've done that and I am awesome. <laughs> you know, you've got to, it's that positive affirmation that I think is best coming from yourself mm -hmm. rather than external things. Reminding right. yourself what you achieved, you know, and that you're worth it. Yeah. Yeah. That's an excellent approach. So has it changed with age, this approach? Like what did you do when you were younger? Uh, was it the same thing or now it's different? When I was younger, I would have let it stop me. Mm -hmm. Whereas now I'll be, I'll be like, no, age? I'm going to do yeah. this. And these are the steps I need to do to achieve that. Sometimes I succeed, sometimes I don't, but yeah. it's, yeah, acknowledging the negative voice and applying reason to that, going, okay, so, yep, that's there, but what, um, what positive things can I do? What can I do with my body? What can I do to change my emotional state? What can I do to change my physical state? Mm. Um, and that, yeah, that has definitely gotten easier with age. And acknowledging it, it's, it's hormones, you know. What time of the month is it? Oh, okay. It's hormones. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Explaining you yeah. to the hormones. And it just sometimes even the, the good skill to have is to acknowledge what's going on. And even sometimes you cannot manage that uh, um, second part of you who is unhappy and you just say okay I let you go for half an hour I allow you to take over me just uh, be this unhappy person for half an hour just feed this dragon yep yep <laughs> and then they say okay time out enough yep. <laughs> just let yourself uh, sometimes to be that bad person which is also like bad in, in our eyes yeah like you're yeah yeah 100% or, uh, being like a um, victim in the victim mode i call it <laughs> yeah yeah very much so yeah it's just a, for me it's also a part not try to be all the time perfect and i can manage that and i can manage that sometimes i say yeah at the moment i can see that but i cannot manage that and i let myself do it you know in this bad way and but i give myself half an hour let's say or one hour <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, very much the case. Limiting it and going, okay, that's enough. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Off you go. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Great. So my last question, and I love it. <laughs> uh, if you have any favorite quote or saying about being a woman. It's not necessarily about being a woman. I think it applies across the board, mm -hmm. um, but there's, excerpts uh, from Nelson Mandela's speech that I also have in my office, Place of Positivity. Um, we ask ourselves, who am I to be brilliant, gorgeous, talented, fabulous? And actually, who are you not to be? Mm -hmm. So I think it just reminding yourself um, that you are awesome yeah. and uh, that, that there's a big speech that goes on, but uh, there is nothing enlightened about shrinking to what other people feel secure around you. And as we let our own light shine, we unconsciously give other people permission to do the same. And as we're liberated from our own fears, um, our present automa presence automatically liberates others. And I do see that with things that even the response to Kilimanjaro, talking to people about coming up here today and... Um, said, I'm going up for a pamper day to Sydney. And people go, wow, you, you do that for yourself. And um, you yeah. see the ripple effect, um, tiny ripples, but you never know how much impact 
you're actually making. You never know how many people's lives you'll change yeah. just through existing and being you. And participating in like public, different public activities and uh, uh, voicing out, like we created this podcast and the project so women can talk. Because sometimes we do so many things, you know, and we would love to share it. And I think it's a great chance to share with the wider audience and maybe who knows maybe someone who is, is listening to you now and it will affect uh, their life you know that in our hands is to do as much as we can to tell our story you know so it was really interesting episode <laughs> thank you for sharing your story and uh, i hope you will enjoy the rest of the day and your photo shoot and you will enjoy this experience. <laughs> Thank you, I'm sure I will. Thanks for the opportunity, it's great. If you have an interesting story, we'd love for you to participate. You can email us at info at alexandrawalker.com. That's Alexandra spelt with a K-S. Or visit our website, alexandrawalker.com. Mm-hmm.